What's going on everybody, it's Delmer and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, I'm really happy to announce that XRI 2.3.0 is now available. On the previous version, we covered some of the features included in the pre-release version, which included gaze interactions. We also look at the POC interactors, also the brand new affordance system, which is really, really cool. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can make the MetaQuest Pro work with eye tracking by using a new adapter that is included in this new package. I'm also gonna be showing you a brand new hand tracking scene that is going to show you some of the main interactions that you can use with your hands and also the controller. So let's jump into my computer and I start looking at it. All right guys, so the first demo scene that I'm gonna show you, it's going to be these hands demo scene and you're gonna see that everything, it's already being set up. And I'm also going to go into XR plugin management, open XR, and you can see that I'm using the PC standalone. I also have eye gaze interaction profile, which in this case is really not required, but once Meta updates their features, then hopefully this is going to be, you know, supported and we don't have to add additional different adapters. And then the Oculus touch controller is going to be required for hand tracking to work. And then these are gonna be some of the settings that we need. On the Android side, we also have some of the same settings, except that we don't have the eye tracking component and then project validation, everything you know, should be clean. All right, guys, so we got hand tracking working, and if I were to do a poke gesture, you can see how the ray goes away. So I'm gonna try to do a poke here, just to basically scroll down, to scroll up. If I wanted to select item one, item two, everything is currently working. We can also do the same thing with rays, right? We can do selection on it. We can do the same thing here with the, with the different buttons. If I wanted to select that, maybe I'll just do a poke, and then select B, we can select A, we can do maybe here a toggle, and then there's also here a little slider that I can also move around, and then another scroll view here that we can also interact with. I can also grab these different items, so let me just bring it here closer so that I'm not colliding with my monitor. We can also scale him up and down. We can also do here, it's another different button. And then there's also here a touchpad if I wanted to do. I don't really know what this is called, I know it's basically like a little password, a passcode selector. All right guys, so for the MetaQuest Pro, we want to enable eye tracking. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the XR plugin management. And in this case, we're not gonna be using OpenXR, we're gonna be using Oculus. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on check OpenXR, and then make sure that I have Oculus selected, make sure that we have our Quest Pro selected in there, which is only required on the Android side. This one, it's going to be the Gaze Hover Simple Interactable. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see the XR Simple Interactable available. There's gonna be some Gaze configuration in here, allow Gaze interaction. So this is pretty simple. It's just gonna show a sphere right above it. And then if you look at this other component, which is the, it, it calls, it's called the Assistant, and if you look in here, this has the allow gaze interaction and also allow gaze assistant. And assistant, what it is, is basically creates an invisible volume that allows you to redirect basically the rays from your, you know, your controllers on your hands so that you can basically select different items. It basically assists you in doing that selection. There's also other settings that I'm gonna show you here on the select for the different components. So if we look at this one right here, you're gonna see that this has more configuration. That's because it has this allow gaze select. And, and what it is, is if you're looking at it for two seconds, it's going to be doing a selection. You can also change it to be, if you wanna do it one second, you can do one second. And then it's gonna be doing an, uh, basically a deselect after uh, four seconds, which in this case is configured by using two and four, but you can make it you know, lower than that if you like to. If we go back to the actual rig, so I'm gonna go ahead and expand this, expand this one. You're gonna see that there's gonna be a gaze interactor in here. And what I want you to do is go into the XR gaze interactor. And I believe this is where I set it up. And what I wanna do though, is I wanna change some of the gaze configuration. And I think this normally is set to a number, I think it's a one. And I'm gonna set it to a number, maybe a, a three, so that it's larger. And this is gonna be the volume that is going to be created. And it's going to have, a, it's gonna scale the collider to be three times as much. That way, when we do the selections, 
is going to be a lot larger. All right, let's go ahead and get closer in here just to some of these items. So if you notice though, now I can, I'm basically staring at that cube. I'm gonna go ahead and look away. Maybe I'm gonna look down, I'm gonna look up, down, up, and you can see that as soon as I do that, the sphere shows up. So I'm focusing on that area right there. So that is gaze hover. So on the assistant, it's pretty cool though, because as I look at it, it's changing. In this case, I, I make some changes. So I made it red when I was looking at it. But if you look at my ray though, I'm gonna look at it and get the ray closer. So that is what assist is. It's assisting me to do the selection because there is a volume within that area. And remember, I set it to three on the scale. So that's what that allows me to do. It basically is assisting me by using gaze and also using the volume, the gaze volume, to be able to, to select the object, right? I can do it with both hands or one hand. This one is also pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to focus on it for two seconds. So two seconds selected, I'm not gonna blink, I'm not gonna blink, I'm not gonna blink, deselected. All right guys, so some of the new features include Poke Interactors. That's something that I showed you previously. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory because it allows you to do poking with hands and controllers. Also, Gaze Interactor and Interaction Assistant is pretty, pretty big because it allows us to interact with different components, specifically with the Assistant. It's a lot easier because it creates a volume. And once we collide with that volume, the ray, in the case of the Ray Interactor, it gets redirected to the target object. So really cool stuff. The Also, the Interaction Groups is something that it's available on the started assets. In the case of using Poke, Direct, and Ray, there's a priority that it's given on the group interactors by the order that we designate it. So poke in this case will take priority over drag and ray. So interaction groups could be very helpful when you have multiple interactors. The interaction affording system, I also showed that in the previous video, basically allows you to change and, and get feedback from you know different object states or material changes. In this case, we have material color changes, audio clips can be played. We can also get haptic feedback uh, depending on you know, how we set up the, the interaction affordance system on some of the objects. Device simulator is pretty big and, and this allows you to, you, know, you don't have to really deploy to a device every single time. We can use basically our keyboard to test our experiences, which is you know, it's a big deal when it comes to saving time as a developer. If we move on, there's gonna be multiple samples available on XRI 2.3.0, started assets, that's basically where I get the, the, the example camera rig. There's also a gaze interactor there that I recommend that you look at. XR device simulator, tunnel, tunneling Vignetti is also one that's available. I haven't tested it yet, but it's available in there. There's also a meta gaze adapter, and this one is pretty big because we couldn't really use gaze interactions uh, interactors before because there wasn't a way, an easy way for XRI to tell the OVR plugin that we needed access for eye tracking. Well, the MetaGaze adapter allows you to do that. And then also there's a new hand interaction demo, which is the one that I show you. And you can get some of these ones from, you know, XR Interaction Toolkit 2.3.0, which you can get through your package. And these are how you get them. You basically just click on import. And then as you can see here, I have the first one. And then I also have, let's see, the fourth one and the fifth one. And in this case, I didn't download these two, so they show as import. But you can download them and download all of them or just one of them if you want to. Gaze features, there is, like I said, a meta gaze adapter. This comes with the Oculus eye gaze input adapter, which basically handles requesting eye tracking permissions through the OVR plugin. Unfortunately, this requires the Oculus integration because Meta didn't really use OpenXR as it's basically as an interface. They created their own version on, of OpenXR. Other than that, if once they implement OpenXR as an open standard, basically you don't have to use this. But for right now, this is how it works. You have to use the Oculus components and Oculus integration in order for this to work. And then this also handles requesting I post stay and it also handles adding and removing eye gaze devices. The gaze adapter sample project validation allows you to basically 
check everything in your project just to make sure that you have the components necessary for gaze to work. And then in here we have a couple of different screenshots. One of them is showing the post date, some of the information that we need for eye tracking to, to work. Also a gaze interactor, which is part of the started assets. You can see it has like XR gaze interactor, XR controller, so that it can get the actual position and rotation of your eyes. Gaze input manager, so that we can track input for our eyes. And then also the Oculus eye gaze input adapter, which is basically the one that handles these three items, such as permission, requesting post day, and also adding and removing gaze devices. So on the project validation side, this is what you're going to see once you add some of these components. The eyes is pretty cool because this validation is pretty cool because it tells you what versions you might need. For instance, the MetaGaze adapter here requires this package, which is the Com Unity XR Oculus and requires this specific version. It also requires the OpenXR package version 1.6.0. So basically this tells you what you would need. The same thing with hand tracking, it'll tell you what it needs for hands interaction demo to work. So pretty powerful stuff. And if you move on to XR plugin management settings in order for us to make gaze to work, if you wanna deploy, if you wanna make it work with Oculus Link, you're gonna need version of Oculus integration V47 or greater. Oculus OpenXR backend is going to be required. Oculus must be enabled for PC and Android. And you might say, Dilmer, why do I need Oculus to be enabled if we're using OpenXR? Well, we're using OpenXR, but with the Oculus implementation, not the one that Unity provides, which is Unity OpenXR. Unfortunately, if Oculus were to follow that recommendation, which they didn't, then we wouldn't need the adapter that I just showed you. So. Maybe at some point Oculus will, but for now it's going to have to work this way. If you want to enable eye tracking, you also need to go into this file here. And then just basically, it's going to look like this where my mouse is and you're going to have to go to eye tracking support, set it to uh, require. I think there's another option in there, but there's two options that are going to allow you to enable it. And then, like I said, you're going to need Oculus here for PC or a standalone. And then also once, once you deploy to Android, you're gonna need that. You can see that I didn't select OpenXR because this OpenXR, it's not going to work with eye tracking. This requires the OVR plugin and the Oculus implementation. So that needs to be set up. And then if you want to support the Quest Pro, which is what we need for eye tracking, then you need to have that enabled under the Android Oculus settings. So if you wanna know more about this, let me know, I'm going to be including additional details in order you know, for this to work. I'm also going to make this available in GitHub so you guys can check it out. And then the settings for hands, because a lot of you ask me, okay, how do I get hands to work? And specifically the hand demo that I'm showing today. This is completely supported with Unity OpenXR, which is really cool. And then you can use under OpenXR in player settings, you can enable Oculus Touch Controller Profile, also some of the features that you're gonna to need to enable, it's gonna be the hand tracking subsystem, meta hand tracking aim, and also the meta quest support. And you can see some of the settings in here on the Android. I'm not really sure where this meta XR feature is. All I know that it was there and I enabled it and, and everything was working. So I think for the most part, they should be okay. And then this is just the demo that they now included. There's a couple of different UI components in here that you can interact with. It's a scroll view here, another scroll view. Some of these components work with eye tracking, so I would recommend that you try both demos, one with eye tracking and one with hand tracking. You can't use both with the OpenXR implementation, but you can track one or the other. And then that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about gaze or you know hand tracking or Anything that I mentioned, let me know. And I'll be making more videos about some of the features that I mentioned today. I'm also going to be linking the previous video if you guys wanna go into more details about the apporting system, about poke interactors. I did that with the Pico. I also did it with my MetaQuest 2. There's a couple of videos available for that. So thank you very much, guys.